Hey everybody, welcome to Retro 9000, the channel where we, uh, we like retro stuff a lot. <laughs> My name's Zach, and welcome to, to, the, to the Nostalgic Gamers Club, I'm calling it, where we just look at old video games, and we look at the box art, and some of the instruction guides that come with it, and we just take a little, little, little trip down memory lane. What do you say? Well, I say yes, and I'm the one recording, so... <laughs> so buckle up or leave. I mean, don't leave, please. I just, you know, YouTube likes retention, so... And I guess if you're just listening on Spotify or, you know, wherever this goes, that's that's fine, too. Anyway, today we are talking about the one, the only, Resident Evil 4 for GameCube. If, if you are a Resident Evil fan, you know that RE4 has, like, a quadrillion ports. It came out for GameCube, for PS2. There was a PS3 version. There was an Xbox version. There were re-releases on pretty much every console since. Then there was the complete remake in 2022, 2023, might have been 23. But for a lot of us, my, myself included, this was really my first big step into the Resident Evil franchise. The older games, while amazing, and I've played most of them, they were slightly before my time when they came out. And also, like at the time, I wasn't really into horror games, so... I remember, though, when Resident Evil 4 came out, me and my buddies picked it up, we played it, we loved it, and it became this lather, rinse, repeat cycle where we would just play it over and over and over again and try to unlock everything, and we'll talk more about the unlocks in a little bit. So let's start by looking at the front cover here. As you can see, I have the Player's Choice Edition, which is uh, not rare at all, uh, not even a little. It's like tw less than 20 bucks, I think, if you want to buy a copy. And I think this is cool, too. We see the, the Spike VGA Awards 2005 winner game of the year, uh, which is pretty slick. On the spine here, it's just Resident Evil 4. And on the backside, who on the backside? We got a lot. Before, you know, before we get to the backside, I'm, I'm going to go back to the front here. So I love this cover. This has become such an iconic cover in my opinion so we got leon leon s kennedy right here in the front um he's in his classic little action pose we got we got chainsaw pete over here with his chainsaw getting ready to slash up the number four apparently <laughs> i do think it's fun I, I, I never really noticed this but i do think it's funny that it says for resident evil I, I i don't know why it's in that order but it is this was called Biohazard in Japan originally, so I don't know if maybe it's like a syntax thing, like if it was Biohazard 4. I don't know if the syntax is different in Japanese. If anybody speaks Japanese, uh, let me know what the syntax is like, because that could be it. And then behind Leon, we see just a bunch of the mobs from the game. Looks like they're in the, the main village. You can kind of see there's some buildings here in the background that look like that, uh, that main village. And this game, again, if you haven't played it, takes place over a lot of different landscapes. There's like a village, there's a castle, there's uh, like a, like a military island. It's wild. <laughs> it's, it's, it's honestly freaking awesome. So let's go to the back here. Uh, there's a lot on the back. First, we see uh, El Gigante. El Gigante. I'm, I'm not sure how to pronounce it. Uh, this being the game of the year edition, it's a little bit of a different back than the, uh, than the typical one would be. Like we have like game of the year, GameCube game of the year off on the side, but we still have all of the descriptions that you would want on the back of a cover. So up here we see Resident Evil reinvents itself as the series moves in a terrifying new direction. U.S. agent Leon Kennedy has been tasked to look into the abduction of the president's daughter. <laughs> You'll love that. And his investigation has led him to a mysterious location in Europe. That's just so vague. I just love that. Like, where, where are we going? Are we going to this weird village or are we going to like, I don't know, a little town in France or something? <laughs> As Leon encounters unimaginable horrors, he must find out what is behind the terror. And then we have a couple bullet points here. We got fast paced, edge of your seat action, aim and shoot, zero in on enemies with laser precision, literally. Cunning enemies use their abilities to attack the player en masse. It, it, this game was so much fun, you guys. I'm, I'm so excited to be looking at this over here. I think this is really funny, honestly. Let me uh, let me get some focus here on this. This says unsurpassed visuals with breathtaking 3D graphics and effects. <laughs> this was breathtaking at one point. New, never before seen enemies, including creatures that defy the laws of nature. Well, yeah, they're monsters. I, th I yeah. <laughs> New gameplay mechanics, behind the back camera perspective and hit zone aiming system. So this was cool. This was something where uh, at the time there weren't really any games doing this. Basically, the way this game works, if you haven't played it, is when you want to aim, you have to stop moving and Leon draws his weapon. 
and you see like the laser sight coming out and you have to kind of pick off different enemies at different areas. Headshots count for more, uh, you know, as, as is kind of like typical nowadays, but it made for a really cool experience because instead of just having, uh, you know, just a first person shooter or anything like that, it's, it just felt very unique. I, I, I don't know any other way to describe it other than it just felt extremely unique. It was a lot of fun. Uh, and it led to, I, I feel like a lot of other games kind of copying this over the shoulder feel. And of course they improved on it over time. Like it wasn't always the stop, aim, fire, whatever other games. I mean, look at hell divers two right now, which is what I've been playing nonstop pretty much, but in hell divers two, it's kind of a similar, you know, it's a little bit further back, but it's an over the shoulder perspective. You don't have to stop when you're aiming. Uh, it's something that's been adopted into a million games. Helldivers is just one of very, very, very many. And I'm not saying it necessarily originated from here because I don't believe it did, but I feel like this is one that really brought that sort of aiming style into the mainstream. And honestly, it was a scary way to have to aim your weapon because when you have hordes of enemies coming at you or you got this guy, you got this weird looking mofo coming at you, and you have to stop and aim your weapon. Like it just adds to the horror of the game, which I think was a, a very intentional move and a very smart move. This game is rated M for blood and gore and intense violence. Let's open this up. So in case you didn't know, the Nintendo GameCube version of this came on two discs because it was such a large game. This was actually one of the first games that I tried to speed run. And my record was I was I never finished it. I got very quick at it, but I never finished it. My record on the first disc was like three hours, which I realize is not very good because when you look at speed runs online, I'm willing to bet someone's beat the game in like sub two hours in its entirety. Uh, I was not very good at games. I, I, you know, I'm still not very good at games. I just like them. <laughs> I've said it before on this channel and I'll say it again. I am not an expert. I'm, I'm just a, a lover of these old games. So let's take this uh, instruction booklet out here. This is a thick boy. This is like a, th that's, that is a booklet. So of course we have just the normal cover art here on the front and let's just kind of pop it open. You got your, you got your warnings. I love this content screen because it's just Leon in his, in his classic Leon looking pose, just do, doing the Leon thing. I think this is super fun. This is something that I, I feel like a lot of games don't do anymore. They give a little prologue here. So it says several years have passed since the destruction of raccoon city. Leon is now facing his ultimate challenge, a mysterious village creatures that defy nature. Are they human? Or dot, 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 question mark. <laughs> and then we see some stills from the game. I mean, honestly, this game does look pretty dated now, but we see Leon with Lewis. We see the uh, the church graveyard. We see El Gigante. We see Leon aiming, aiming his weapon. And we see some of these mobs here. And this is cool. So there's a couple little uh, kind of descriptors of the characters here. We got Leon. We got Ashley sitting on a barrel looking looking all happy to be alive, you know, until she's captured. Then we get into the setup. I think this is so interesting because this is something that you just don't see anymore uh, with, with how many games are downloadable and, you know, you just don't get a lot of switching discs, which is something that was pretty commonplace back in the day. Uh, so this one says Resident Evil 4 is contained on two game discs. You must insert disc one to start the game. When you complete disc one, a screen appears prompting you to switch to disc two. Remove disc one and insert disc two to continue enjoying the game. That's just what, like, that's a lot of legwork that I feel like people would not want to do today. And that's not me saying like, oh, this, you know, the lazy generation. That's it's. I just think like, I wouldn't want to do it. Maybe I'm lazy. <laughs> they get into starting the game, your basic controls. We got our actions. So there's obviously aim and shoot. The 180 turn, which was a really cool thing. You know, if an enemy's coming at you, you can just pull backwards on the control stick and press B to turn around, and then you start running. Then you start running like crazy. Got your knife attack, which in the remake, they made the knife breakable, which added a whole new layer of scaring the hell out of me because you, you, th that was always the thing in this. If you ran out of ammo, you can knife them. You're, you're probably going to be fine. In the remake, they, they can't take that away from you. There's the action button, which, uh, again, I don't think this was the first one to add in this action button. A lot of the games of this era implemented quick time events, QTEs, as they're sometimes called, where it's basically just, you know, a prompt appears on screen. You press a button, whether it's in a cutscene or during the gameplay, and then your character does some cool sort of pre-programmed cinematic move. There were a lot of quick time events in this game, and that's honestly something that I did not love about this game uh, or any of the games from this era. I, I, quick time events just kind of suck. I'm going to start the coalition against quick time events. You'll, you'll, you'll get an email from me. 
little bit of info about the game screen and the status screen. Uh, here we can see the uh, the little briefcase there that you can organize. Oh, I'm sorry, the the attaché case that you can organize to fit all of your herbs and eggs to your uh, to, to your liking. Herbs, eggs, and grenades. More about the attaché, the map screen, item screen, file screen. Now, here's the thing. They have these things taking up whole pages. This, you're telling me that we needed a whole screen for the item screen. Look at that. This whole bottom of it is completely blank. The entire thing. I'm just saying these could have fit into, into one page. It's fine. It's fine. I was, I, I'm not trying to rag on the designer. Uh, we do have a little bit of info in here about combining items, which is a very important part of the game uh, where you might be collecting different herbs. You get like the red, green, and yellow herb. You combine them together, raises your max health, etc. The weapons dealer, I freaking love this guy. The classic, like, what are you buying? <laughs> if you guys don't already, uh, there's a podcast called Get Played, and uh, one of the hosts of that show does an incredible, like, they've invented this character around uh, the Resident Evil 4 merchant, and it's it gets me every time. They talk a lot about saving and loading. In the original Resident Evil games, you would get typewriter ribbons, and you can only save a certain amount of times during the game. Like, you would have to find the ribbon to be able to save. This was a little bit different. This was, if you found a typewriter, you could save, period. Which I know some people maybe weren't super thrilled about, but, you know, I, I me not being excellent at video games, that was, that was very nice for me. We got our options screen. We got some hints. Uh, I, I'll read these hints off because I think this is really interesting. So it says, enemies fall down easier if you shit out their legs and feet. If you time your action button kicks right, they will hit other enemies around you as well as your target. You can shoot enemies through wooden doors. Shoot red barrels and drum cans to make them explode. And then they talk about the weapons dealer, the merchant. You may be able to get more money out of items by combining different treasures than you would by selling the items individually. And I don't remember if during the game they actually called that out, uh, but that was something that was a huge, huge part of it where... If you just sold whatever, a necklace without combining it with anything else, you're not going to get that much money. But then you combine the necklace with a bunch of gems and jewels and stuff, and it's going to be worth a ton. And then you can afford the rocket launcher and everyone, everyone wants that. The notes section, because you got to take notes. How are you going to take notes on that, by the way? Look at that. That's like if you're writing with black ink, good luck reading that. You need a white Sharpie to write your notes down on this. And this is maybe the biggest regret of my gaming career here. The nightmare is not over. Neither zombie nor human, a new horror has come. Pick up your Resident Evil 4 chainsaw controller today and beat them at their own game. <laughs> but like, look at that thing. This controller is so hard to get now. They are so expensive. It became a total collector's item. And it's just a GameCube controller shaped like a damn chainsaw. How cool is that? That's the coolest freaking thing. I want one of those so bad. They're so expensive. And then, of course, we get into some of these movies, which you guys... Okay, here's the thing. At the time, I liked these movies because I loved Resident Evil. These movies suck. I mean, they suck. They are really, really bad. And as seems to be the case with a lot of these old guides, they want you to buy the official strategy guide. This one was from Brady Games where you're going to get a comprehensive walkthrough, expert boss tactics to defeat all beasts, including the new enemies, highly detailed maps, complete item and weapon rosters. And it says here, the signature series guide includes bonus coverage and exclusive foldout and more. Well, if you weren't here for the guide, you'll, you'll stay for the more. And then you got a nice little back cover of El Gigante saying register. Well, I don't think it's him saying it <laughs> to be clear. I don't think he's like register your product. <laughs> But it says register your product and get Resident Evil 4 goodies at capcom.com slash insider. So again, another relic of the time where it was just like, hey, register this thing, get more things. You know, they were really trying to promote their products out. One thing that I really want to talk about with this game is how many different things you could unlock. Uh, you could unlock the Chicago typewriter by beating Assignment Ada, which was just this extra playable mission in the game. You could unlock infinite ammo for a bunch of weapons. And eventually what made the game super fun and honestly what helped my speed run a lot, it's going to make me sound terrible because with this, uh, my speed run was still three hours for the first disc, but you could unlock the infinite rocket launcher, <laughs> which I mean, the rocket launcher is a one hit kill for pretty much any enemy. I, I think it is for any enemy. And so when you have the infinite rocket launcher, you're just literally running around just like boom, boom, boom. <laughs> and it's not a challenge. It's just at that point, it's just fun. You're just clearing rooms. You could eventually, I think this was on the PS2 only, you could get uh, like a suit of armor for Ashley. 
I played both versions, so for me, they kind of blend together uh, in terms of what unlocks happen on which console between this and PS2. So this came out in 2005 initially, and f- and from GameSpy, it has five stars on GameCube, five stars on PS2, five stars for the Wii version, uh, which had like the little, you could use the Wiimote to aim, which was interesting. IGN gave it a 9.8. Nintendo Power gave it a 10. Xbox Magazine gave it a 9. PC Gamer gave it an 85. From what I understand, the PC version at the time was not that good. Uh, my computer was not powerful enough at the time to play it, so I didn't play that version. Edge gave it a 9 out of 10. Metacritic, the GameCube version, got 96 out of 100, so did the PS2 version. And as we already discussed a little bit, it won Game of the Year, it won Best Graphics, it won PlayStation Game of the Year, it won Best Video Game Release for Horror, it won Future Award for Excellence, it won Best Film-Based Game of 2005, which is weird to me because really, it's this This is not film-based. I, I that's a weird, a weird win. I, I don't know if I agree with this being film based necessarily. And as of December, 2022 resident evil four had sold 12.3 million units when combining all versions, which is wild. That's nuts. And of course this led to the resident evil remake. Uh, this has been released on literally every console you can imagine. I feel like this is becoming the new doom. Like, you know, can my calculator run doom? I think in 10 years it's going to be, can my calculator run re four? Probably. And one last thing that I wanted to talk about was the development cycle of this game because it went through a lot of versions. It went through a lot of variations. You can actually find beta footage online of Leon walking and there's like a bunch of like baby dolls and like deer heads and things like that. It's just a really creepy stuff where it seemed like at the time they were maybe going more towards a horror feel. And then it seems like they did dial it back to become more of a survival thriller as opposed to a horror style game, which I think was the right call. I think this works really well as a thriller. And it was scary. Like when when Chainsaw Pete breaks out and starts chasing you, you're scared. I was scared. I'm still scared. But, you know, I had to ask myself, I'm I'm like, I'm making a series about some of my favorite retro games from the 90s and 2000s. I can't leave Resident Evil 4 off that list. And th- this is this is just the beginning, you guys. And I have so many more games from the GameCube, from N64, from the Wii, from PS2 that I'm going to be bringing on the show. And I'm just going to be, again, like looking at these box arts, looking at the instruction booklets, going through some strategy guides. So if you like this type of video, I would really appreciate it if you subscribed. And if you don't, uh, well, yeah, get out of here. You know, what, are you, what are you still doing? <laughs> No, I appreciate you watching or listening. And uh, yeah, please let me know in the comments uh, if you guys have any suggestions on what the next game I cover should be. If I have it, I will definitely cover it. And if I don't, I'm going to look into getting a copy because of you, because I appreciate you. All right, want that? Enjoy the rest of your day. You take, you take her easy and I'll catch you later. Peace.